Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. I'm here today with Lydia. Hi. And you're going to have to forgive me because the left side of my face is numb because I just got back from the dentist. They said that it wouldn't last this long and I've been waiting, but we can't wait no more. So that's why no, the side of my mouth's fine. not working. So if I sound like I'm a bit drunk, I'm not. I just went to the dentist this morning. So anyway, let's uh, get into this. We're going to do Lydia's hair today. Yeah. We've had a little bit of a chat about what we're going to do. Um, Lydia wants to be blonde. It's, um, we've just come out of um, winter in Australia. It's now spring. And we um, see often um, our clients wanting to go lighter towards a warmer month. And they tend to give their hair a break in the cooler months. So they use demis and semis and stuff like that. Um, so today we've decided we're going to make her as blonde as we can. However, um, so that it's a little bit more even, we're going to start with preparing our base using Matrix Color Sync, just to give it like a nice even beginning. Um, so we'll process that for about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to do something around level nine. So it's not going to be awfully dark. All we want to do is try and match her ends a little bit better to this sort of area here. And the reason why I like to do that is rather than doing lots of low lights and trying to match and bring that dark through the root or from the root into the ends, um, I find it's easier just to level out the base and then go back and um, lighten the hair. And we're obviously going to use uh, the light master with bonder inside. So that's going to look after that when we lighten it. And um, only sort of half processing the semi-permanent, not processing it for the full 20 minutes. Um, you don't have to worry about trying to pull all that color out. So okay. we'll be here for a few hours. Yeah, that's so good. Settle in. Um, also with a haircut today, we're gonna completely reshape it. We're gonna leave it long, um, but we're gonna give it a really good trim. You can see that it's carrying some damage from the cooler months. So I'll probably cut it up like just to sort of right on the chest, maybe just about like there. Um, just to get those split ends off. And then um, Lydia said she wanted to reshape it around the face um, just so that when she blow dries it, it sits nice. She's got those nice shape, complement her face. And then we'll lay the back just to bring that color out. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna wrap her up. We're gonna do that first color. Um, and then um, once we've done that, we're gonna lighten it. We'll process it, rinse it, tone it, and then we're into the haircut. So it will be a big day today, but yeah. um, Rome was a built in a day. And <laughs> sometimes it does take a good solid four or five hours to create beautiful hair. So yeah, sounds good. we're gonna get stuck into it see you soon. Okay, so I'm out the back in the colour room. Um, I've decided that I'm going to actually um, put some warmth into Lydia's hair. So I'm just going to use the um, the Matrix Colour Sync 8M. And then um, we'll process that for, like I said, well, I'm intentionally going to under-process it. Um, and then once that's done, I'm going to rinse it all. We're going to go back and, and lighten it all out. I'm going to do like baby lights. I'm not going to do balayage uh, as such. I'm going to do some baby lights and then once they're processed, um, I'm just going to do a toner. We're not actually going to stretch the root, I don't think so. Uh, okay, so my colors are in the bowl. I always weigh up all my color. So I actually decided to use 9MM and 8P. Um, 40 grams of 9MM, uh, 20 grams of 8P, and then um, my 10 bowl. I'm going to mix it up with the ping. Um, and then um, we're going to apply that to Lydia's hair. Okay, back from the basin where we did the toner. Now we're just going to um, dry it all off and then we're gonna start our foiling. So I've sectioned Lydia's hair up into three um, basic sections there. And the first couple we're gonna do are gonna be diagonal. So we're gonna do them like this, just in her hairline.
that was uh, a little bit trickier than I expected, um, but hopefully well worth it. So now we're going to process that. The back's already ready to rinse, um, so I'm going to get Lydia Oakley, so I'm going to rinse the back, rinse the back, rinse the rest. Um, the done. Lydia has the patience of a saint because I, um, I told her that it would be a long process because I was um, weaving. I guess I did a combination of weaves and baby lights, but where the hair was darker, I had to actually use um, 9, 9% or um, 30 volt. And then where the hair was already light and we just wanted to brighten it up, I just used 10 volt. So <clears throat> obviously we do that to maintain um, the best possible condition we can and that's just not as straightforward as doing some more. So the link is done. I'll just get you to look this way for me, Lydia. L maybe li even a little bit more. Just turn your head to the left. Yep, perfect. To uh, yep, your left. Mm -hmm. So I like to do this so that when I cut the side, I don't have to worry about the shoulder here. And it makes it far easier to do that. See? That way you don't have to worry about trying to get in over the shoulder. And you've seen me do this when it's dry. When it's dry, I just pop the scissor in behind, hold it with a comb and just cut it like that. So we'll just do that on the other side too. Those ones um, on the top of the ears, are, they give hairdressers nightmares, literally. Oh, I can imagine. I've, I've caught a couple of them in my time, more than I'd like to admit, actually. <laughs> yeah, mine's well and truly healed, so. That's good, doesn't hurt. Great for me and everything. Yeah, you just touch those and people jump out of the chair and want to oh, yeah. stab you with my own scissors. <laughs> but I used to be like that when I first got it caught. Look straight at me, babe. section on each side to be our guideline. Or our markers for the entire frame for this haircut. And then um, it appears Lydia's hair parts here naturally and it's quite strong. Would I be right in saying that? Yeah. You always part of there or do you flip it around? Um, I flip it around here and there, but most of the time it's definitely Okay, so if we're going to flip it around, then it's important that we we work with a center parting. So we'll just pull this hair forward so we can find a center parting first. If I cut it on the side and she likes to flip it around, when she moves it off that part, it can sometimes look like um, we've missed um, parts of the hair because when the hair travels, it'll overhang the shape on the other side. So rectangle section over directing our hands, our fingers to retain length. I need to make sure that we over direct the hair so that we don't cut all the length off and having those points on the sides or even cutting it on the shoulder so it falls around in the back. We don't want to cut this off here. We want to make sure we over direct it enough to avoid doing that. Just have some going, thank you. See, it's really important we don't don't touch these ends. And we keep doing this essentially until you have no hair that comes into that shape in the front. So we pull all the hair from the back forward. Now this will also layer the back, so that's something to be mindful of, but because we are layering the back of the hair, um, um, it's for us in this particular haircut, it's okay, but if your client just wanted um, shaping around the front and didn't want layering in the back, then I would suggest that you do um, some of those, um, use some of those techniques you've seen me do in previous videos where I do seamless face framing 
um, and I use actually um, triangular shapes to do that so that we don't interrupt. So we're actually layering the hair up here rather than down here because that way we don't interrupt the, um, the one length in the back. So if your client doesn't want to have any visible layering in the back at all or any layering at all period, um, this haircut's probably going to have its limitations because you can see I've pulled all the hair from the back. There's only a little bit left to, that reaches it, but when the hair falls into the back, it's still going to look layered. But I'm going to like go back over it again, so you're not going to see those layers anyway because I'm going to redo them in a more seamless um, uh, technique with a more seamless technique so that we don't have visible layers that are look really, really choppy. Um, I'm not really into that. I do like classic shapes, but I don't like seeing really choppy, heavy layers in the back. I think it's just a, not that it's right or wrong. Um, it's just a personal taste as a hairdresser. I'm not really into doing that. If a client wants me to do it, I'll do it, but um, I'll try and talk them out of it nine times out of 10. But at the end of the day, if that's what someone wants um, and they insist on me doing it, then I'm obviously um, gonna do what they ask because they're paying the bill. So it's time to lay the back. Cameras always get in the way, don't they? Ends of the haircut is done and the framing around the face is done, but I've decided I'm actually going to layer the back dry. So I'm going to blow dry the hair. Um, I'm going to flat brush a little bit, then I'm going to round brush blow dry it, and then we'll um, do the layers in the back. And we're done. Just a little style fixer. Well, I can feel my face again and I'm talking properly. Yeah, that's good. It's really <laughs> sore. Oof, I hate the dentist. But I love your hair. I love my hair too. It looks amazing. Hmm. Thank you so much. It was a big day. Yeah. I, um, I think it's really nice. So you can see we just did a nice, soft, uh, classic blow dry, not overstyled, something that's very achievable and believable every day. Um, let me spin you around so everyone can see the back. Um, I'm really happy with the colour. The goal for me was to try and give some depth. So you can see like there's darkness in here, there's darkness in there. Um, just to try and give it that, that more depth. Brought that colour through to the ends. Took the length off, cleaned it up. Beautiful classic shape around the face. And Lydia's hair is uh, amazing, yeah, just like the rest so of her. <laughs> awesome. You. Thanks for coming in. Hey, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you think you know someone who may share, like benefit from this video, uh, it's been a big day. Uh, please make sure you share with them because it's important that we share so other people can grow. Um, if you want to support my channel, you can get over to my Instagram site and you can get yourself a t-shirt or like a hot, sexy singlet like Lydia has on. If you're a female, um, it really does help create the videos so that you guys um, can uh, get as much content as I create, but um, it does cost a little bit. So find a t-shirt here and there might not seem much, but um, they're really cool. They feel nice. Yeah, and if, nice you've got, if you're training like me, <laughs> these bit tight, you just got to stretch them a bit, but no, you look really good. Thanks Thank for coming you. in today. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And also, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. And go and follow Lydia on Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? Lydia.paisley. There you go, go and follow her. And if you don't follow me already, I mean, they've got 135k <laughs> on YouTube and like 42 on Instagram. What is he doing? Like, go follow me. Go follow him. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Till next time from Canberra Straits. Bye.